Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 3 vs 3 on Omaha and today I'm going to be using the 716th Infantry Division. So this is a game that is played after the patch, after the most recent patch, where I would say the 716th have been buffed quite significantly. They've had the B2 price reduced from 110 to 100 and they've had the Flammenpanzer reduced from 110 to 85 although I still don't really find much of a use for it and then they've also had a Panzer 35 added to phase A and I definitely made use of that in this one so yeah let's turn it to my point of view I'm going to be taking the left side of the map we're going to be having Cassidy with the third Forschermjäger in the center of the map and Haymaker with his 17th SS Panzer Grenadier on the right side so Haymaker, my old friend, joining me once again. So here we are with my AT guns placed down. I was at the start of the game looking for decent locations to put an AT gun. Now there's a few nice locations that you can use. There's obviously the couple at the big top side of the orchard here. Come up the road, unload into the orchard at the start of the game. Now the other place that not many people really think about is here to the right side of the orchard because you have this road that you can fast move up to and you can drop a pack 40 into this hedgerow and that can fire at this road now a pack 40 is like 1200 meter range so if you put a pack 40 here you're going to be able to hit this road very easily have it with like a command unit maybe and it will be relatively accurate so that's quite nice also the HE is very good for pinning down infantry that do get dropped off on this road so this road is the main road you have to worry about because it's probably the only road that can really get to you from their spawn when you're playing on this side of the map. You could also fast move down here and come across the dirt road but not many players do that and I wouldn't expect them to anyway. Now you just have to be careful, fast moving this close to the 50-50 does mean that the trucks will be around this area by the time you unload your AT guns. So. Yeah, just got to be careful of that. Now another place you can put an AT gun, especially like a Pac-40 again, is over on this far left side. The 1,200 meter range just about reaches this road, and it's a really nice crossfire. So there's that to consider as well. However, you do leave yourself vulnerable to any infantry that sneaks its way into these tree lines early on, because the opponents do have a road that crosses very close to the front line here. Now at the start of the game, you do have a road that goes straight up towards the left side of the map which is a lot quicker than the opponents coming down here and going across however it does leave you vulnerable in the center to a little salient appearing but generally you can get rid of that with just by just spreading out a few infantry so off we go we got my pack 40 moving into position I've got my two other packs moving up here as well going to be taking up both of those positions that I said before I've got a Alfgladder that's going to be sitting in this tree line, as well as some infantry just to spread out and uh, help me against enemy infantry. On the left side it's just a couple of Ostrupen, IG-18, Grenfieller and some Fusiliers. Now at the start of the game Haymaker brings out a Ju-87. Now at the moment it's not very common for people to buy sort of planes at the start of the game. So here we're going to be seeing Haymaker take full advantage of that using his JU-87 to hit Robert AM's Cromwell. One shot, lovely jubbly. Taking that out, now he's going to approach my side of the map and he's going to be going for this M22 Locus. I'm actually up against the 101st player in this one. And after passing that M22, I think it annoyed a Sig Sigitas. A little, and he's brought in a Mustang to have a go at the at uh, Haymaker's Ju87. Now you may have seen my Pack 37s took out the WC25, which was carrying probably some airborne rifles and the M22 Locus at the start, which was really nice. But here we're going to be seeing the uh, Mustang come onto the back of the uh, Ju87, but it's having trouble getting that kill. It's going to come around for another pass, but Haymaker's been evacing that for quite a while now, so it's most likely to get away, and it most certainly does. So just a Mustang left in the sky now, currently already pushing a plus one, even though that small salient has appeared on this left side like I assumed it would. 
airborne rifles are starting to push onto my pack 37s but I do have the IG-18 in position to take out any infantry that was left from the road there so that IG-18 is going to be doing the job with the help of the pack 40 going to be pinning down that squad and forcing it to fall back as I approach with my Ostrupen which are now attack moving through the orchard also spreading out my infantry on this far left side now to get rid of the little bump in the front line and I'm moving up my IG-18 into a position where it can fire on the majority of the tree lines. The only one that's a little bit of a worry is this one because it's blocked by these trees. I'm going to be having my Fusiliers move up on this far left side anyway and they're going to try and move in there and find out if there's any infantry to contest. The airborne Rifles in the field are being constantly pinned down. I've also got my Kubel MG on the case now, and that actually re helps reveal a six pounder. So, this is an unvetted six pounder. Going to be hitting my Kubel MG and forcing it to fall back. Now, knowing that is there, if I bring up like a pack 40 and wheel this forwards, I can probably take that out. So, I'll be going for that later on. But either way, IG 18 has found airborne leaders with the help of the Ostrupen and the Fusiliers. They're going to be hitting that hard, but Mustang now coming in to strafe ground forces. Of course, Haymaker only has a JU 87, and I haven't invested in any Air Force early on. There's not much point when the opponent has some Mustangs. But here it comes over and over. Two Mustangs now in the sky. And a rather large investment from Sigitas. So I've brought up an MG34. This is quite simply just to help pin down any rifles that come down the road. But what happens here is Sigitas loses another unit of airborne rifles to my Pack 37 before they are unloaded because obviously I've since moved up my defensive line along with my Ostrupen. So starting to make quite a lot of ground here. Being very aggressive pushing on what I know to be quite a, a large lead at the moment, taking out the unit of infantry and the locust at the start of the game was a very good opportunity to push up. I lose my own unit of Ostrubin here to an M1 gun that was hidden in this tree line, but now that he's revealed that it's not going to last very long as it gets hit by two IGA teams and that gets rid of their little salient and gives us plenty of territory in return. So six pounder still there, still revealing itself with my Kubel MG, bringing up a Panzer B2. I need to be wary that that doesn't get into the line of sight of that AT gun, otherwise I could lose it very easily. But here, this B2, now only worth 100 points. It's 2 star, 7 AP with an 8 or 9 HE uh, howitzer on it. So you can see it will start to fire at this airborne rifle. And it just does loads of damage to infantry. I just absolutely love the B2. It's like an IG-18, an armoured IG-18 on tracks. Love it. So off we go with my B2. Slowly starting to rip to shred any infantry it comes across. Again, just got to keep it out of line of sight of the enemy AT gun. Trying to get the Pack 40 in position to actually take that on. But the Mustang's going to be coming in there and pinning it down. We are going to be seeing some artillery come in. That's going to be starting to go for my pack 37 that's obviously being spotted on this far left side. Brought up some reinforcing Ostrup and got to be careful that I don't group them too much because of that artillery. So just going to be spreading them out a little before I unload the second squad. HS129 coming in from Cassidy to try and take out the Churchill 5 is unsuccessful and with two Mustangs in the sky it would be likely to see that HS129 go down. However, HS129 does have quite a lot of durability, so we'll have to wait and see. Does it go down? Yes, it does. So Cassidy's lost his HS129. Six Pounder is now in range of my Ostrupen's machine gun. I'm also moving up the Alphaler here and the Fusiliers, so that's well in line of sight of anything we're coming up against. These fusiliers are literally just on a normal movement across towards the airborne rifles just so that I can spot them in that tree line and the pack 40 is busy taking out the six pounder and six pounder goes down. On the far left side airborne rifles again being pushed back. 101st don't really stand much of a chance in this sort of scenario where I'm using the 716th like I am. 
like having the fire support like this, IG-18s, Pack 37s, Pack 40, just pushing forwards, there's not really much they can do and this road is deadly. See, he's now bringing down an M22, but that's most likely to bump into my back 40. And you can see he's now coming to range. I'm starting to uh, fire at the M22. Artillery is coming in from the M1 howitzer, and that's the sort of thing he has to rely on in order to take me on. But he has to do it sooner than later, otherwise I'm going to make so much ground. You can see already... All my units are just slowly moving forwards with attack move orders. And I'm taking loads of ground. So yeah, what the 101st player really needs to do is invest in more of these M1 howitzers if they have them. And really target down like the IG-18s, the Pack 37s and obviously the Pack 40 here. And really try and get rid of them. But if I micro correctly and keep everything on the move, it should be very difficult for them to do so without any like decent recon. Because I can now spot their recon. I've got Fusiliers pushing the front line. Got Aufklärer as well. So any recon that they try and bring close to my fire support weapons, I can spot and kill. And that's the idea of having all these Fusiliers on the front line. You can even see me bringing up an Aufklärer here to cover this part of the front line here. So another airborne rifle is being brought up with the M22 there to accompany that. And that's just going to be taking control of that tree line. But I'm going to be continuing to reinforce myself with more units as well. Panzer B2, a couple of units of Ostrupen. We've got the recon coming in there. I've got a Panzer 35 now coming in. And this is to give the extra veteran C as I roll forwards with the B2. Further to that, I also have my first Flak HC8 on the way. Another WC25 goes down to the Pack 40. Managed to get that kill before it's dropped out. On this left side, a couple units of Fusiliers coming in to contact with some airborne rifles. I do have the MG34 helping out there. Making sure that you have some form of fire support weapon in line of sight at all times is quite important. So ideally I would have had this IG-18 also in line of sight, but currently it is not, so just going to have to rely on the machine guns of all of these infantry squads to uh, take on these airborne rifles. Now this is a very nice bombing target. You could very easily take out a lot of that infantry. But currently what I'm doing is just charging with the Ostrup and trying to make those airborne rifle surrenders. And I do, just before they get pinned down, and that's well worth it. I would trade an Ostrup and squad for an airborne rifle squad any day. So this Flake KT-8 is going quite far up the road. The idea is to have it sort of cover the road the whole way down towards these buildings here and that way it's going to be very hard for them to reinforce where I'm pushing so hard across this entire front. But now Sejitash is going to start relying on his B25B Marauders. So instead of using these M1 howitzers he's going to be relying on bombers to take out my fire support and here he's going to be taking out the MG34. He's also going to be bombing my IG-18 and Pac-37. Does take out the Grenfjellar. Actually doesn't take out either of the support weapons though. So that's okay. Pack 37 here that's been rolling forwards with my infantry is now taking on an M22 and is going to get the kill. Usually is still taking on airborne rifles at max range. So, yeah, that's just an engagement that's going to happen there. Now, one thing that just happened on this right side, Pack 40 managed to get line of sight all the way through here to a 25 pounder that was targeting it on the far right. That was a very nice kill. And we also just took out a Stuart coming down the road. And just like I said, this pack 40 is in a prime position now to uh, really kill anything coming down the road. And it's got a Flak 88 to join it. Now further to that, we are also starting to invest quite heavily in these Panzers. So we have the Panzer B2. We've got two of those accompanied by the Panzer 35S. And the idea of these B2s is to push across an area where tanks aren't likely to pop up. So generally with tanks... Uh, people will like move them down the roads and then engage, right? Um, if I have a B2 all the way over on this left side, though, they've got quite a way to go. So I can take full advantage of that and kill off some infantry squads before they get there. And also have plenty of ways to ambush them along the way. So I've got, obviously, the Flak 88. I've got the uh, Pack 37s. And the Pack 40, of course. So starting to move forwards here, Flak 88 is going to be targeted by the M1 Howitzer, which is 
to be expected. We do see a Typhoon come in. That's going to be going for the Bombing Strike onto the Pack 40. Finally killing that off. But that's okay. Pack 40 definitely did its job. And we started to make even more of these rifles fall back on the left side. So what I've been doing, keeping my Fusiliers back, using their MGs to help keep the airborne rifles pinned down and then just charging the Austrian forwards so that he's forced to fall back and by doing that I'm just making ground um, normally you would have like a, obviously a command unit there and you wouldn't have to pull them back but at the moment he is definitely lacking command and he's relying a lot on these M22s but can't quite get them into a, a decent position to take on my BTs now in general, B2s can be killed by M22s quite easily if you get the M22 into the right position, but since I have quite nice AT coverage, they just can't get close at the moment. Also, they only have three armor, so even against the B2 they might lose, because the Panzer B2 has more than enough AP to penetrate an M22, whereas an M22 has to be very close to a B2 to actually penetrate it. So again here, Ostrupen charging forwards whilst my units pin them down and the airborne rifles there are going to surrender and that's the next compound taken Thunderbolt coming in going to be targeting my tanks but I think that's probably the last thing they need to worry about this Thunderbolt would have been much better off targeting my IG-18s but if we go to Sigitas's point of view there's not too much fire support you can see he can see the IG-18s on this far side but, um, yeah, the Typhoon there, or Thunderbolt, should have come in and hit the IG-18. Because that's probably causing a lot more damage on this left flank than anything else. And you can see just the limitation of units that Sigitas is working with now. Since I am just rolling forwards and destroying him as I go. So where does this stand in terms of the last patch? I think, honestly... Like, the 716th, with the price buff to the B2s, just makes them even more cost-efficient than they were before. I get loads of kills with these B2s, they are fantastic. And they just really complement the Ostrup and IG Pack 37 combo really well in Phase A. And making them cheaper, I'm not sure if it was the right move, honestly. Now, obviously, I don't want my prized division to be nerfed, but... I don't know. A lot of people call the 716th quite weak, but I've never really had a battle where I've necessarily struggled to do well later in the game with them, at least. They're quite slow to start, yes, and I think that's where a lot of people have issues with the division. But once you get rolling, I mean, just look at it. It's like a wall of, of men, and how well we've traded in, the, in this game means that Sigitas can never amass enough to, to stop us rolling forwards. He also invested in 2B 26B Marauders, and because of that, I know that I can just attack and move forwards. Because these guys, they cost a lot of cash. Like, if we just have a look, I'm not sure if I can get the, the card up for them, but I'm pretty sure they're over 200 points each, and I'm well aware of that. So now we're seeing a Cromwell come up, and, well, that bumps into a new Flak 88, and that's going to be taken out. The Flak 88 also stops the Typhoon from bombing it with a one-shot fullback, so that was lovely. And now what I'm doing is bringing up a new Pack 40. So this Pack 40 kind of there to take the place of the Flak 88. I know that the Flak 88 is going to get targeted very hard by opposing artillery, so just bringing in the Pack 40 is a little, little less um, of a target, really, in comparison to a Flak 88, and that's what I'm going to be trying to do here. So two Spitfires coming in, Typhoon's going to be dropping its bombs onto the B2 and again not entirely sure if targeting the tanks is the best idea in this situation. You'd be better off targeting the Pack 40, the Flak 88, Pack 37, IG 18s. Yes the B2s are the furthest forwards but those can be ambushed quite easily by AT guns. But anyway just to get rid of any pesky artillery now like 25 pounders I brought in my Verflammen and you can see I'm going to be taking out a 25 pounder on that road with this Verframmen. Got another one moving up to take out the M1 Howitzer and whatever else I find further up. So yeah, all going well so far. And on this right side, well, just pinned down 
a unit of infantry there with the IG-18 that's uh, holding back on this right side. On the left side, however, pushing forward. It's going to be taking out some Bren group there. Thunderbolt finally coming in, targeting the right thing, getting rid of the IG-18 there. Still got two more left on this uh, left side, so I'm not particularly worried. But if they started targeting all of my command units or support units from the start of the game, I definitely would have been in a much different situation moving forwards. So, although I think in general, like using the 716th, like if somebody knows how to counter it with RT properly, like Sexton's, and knows how to use, like, counter it with, for example, those Thunderbolts with the rockets, they're really good at killing uh, IG 18s, then you can come against, like, some trouble. But honestly, like, the momentum behind this division is just amazing now and I was finding that I just didn't have enough stuff to spend it on because I'm used to having to spend a lot more on B2s for example but yeah here just bringing up some more infantry got some more command on the way because on this left side we literally have zero command and I basically identified that later into the game but also it doesn't really matter because the IG-18s they don't need command to be able to do their job they've reduced the accuracy of the IG-18 to like three from four, but you can see there one IG-18 shot pinned down both of those Bren group instantly. And Sildan is bringing it over some Bren group to this left side to help out, just sort of hold the line whilst my Austrip and so on move forwards. But it's not going to be enough to stop the combination that I have going. This Verflam in here, that's got a target now, so that's going to be firing away. I've also brought up a supply vehicle to resupply the other Verflam. But here we go. Flamen going to be targeting the 25 pounder that was brought up over here and that's going to be taking that out in one shot. Goodbye to that 25 pounder. Also going to be able to stop the tanks that are coming up the road. You've got a Churchill, a Challenger and a Cromwell all there. That Cromwell actually being taken out by the Pack 40. Now a little bit of a mistake here on my part having the IG-33 and Pack 40 uh, so close together and, and basically heading to the same position. That's not ideal because it's a massive bombing target. Using the IG and Pac-40 in co combination is good, but yeah, just having them so close, that's a no-no. I should have had like this IG-18 or IG-33 over to the far left here in the orchard and the Pac-40 maybe further to the right, but I'm going to be a little bit careful of course. If you look at my recon, got Fusiliers pushing their way forwards along with Alfkladder. I've also got the Alfkladder for the, the flank as well. See the B26B Marauder comes in here, bombs out both the Pac-40 and the IG-33 in one go. Which is exactly what I was talking about. B26B Marauder here comes in and bombs these Fusiliers and Ostrupen, but that's okay. Uh, we're only up against Bren Group and the Ostrupen can take care of them easily with the help of the IG-18, which is still very much alive back here. Another B26B Marauder coming in. He loves his B-26Bs, I can tell you that much. And that one's going to be going for the bombing strike onto the Flak 88. Does unwittingly take out my Fusiliers that were nearby. But with all of these bombings coming in, it does finally force me to invest in some form of uh, air force so that I can shoot down some of these bombers and stop them from killing off my fire support because they are finally starting to target it appropriately. We are on a plus three, however, and it is getting very close to the end of the game. We're on 1,800 points already. Currently, my MD-34 moving up here, going to be helping take out the last of the Bren group on that left side. It's just a matter of uh, continuing all of my units on attack moves forwards. I'm coming up against heavier targets now, like the Churchill 7 here, for example. I'm not going to be able to target that with a B2, but... Instead of going head-on, I'm just going to be pushing the B2s to the left side, away from these tanks. And hopefully, what I'm hoping anyway, is that uh, they won't basically come over and kill them. Because they're too slow. The Sildan has surrendered and left the game. That is the 15th Infantry Scots player on the far right. A maker finally breaking through over there. Here we see my ME109 is coming in. Two-star ME109 going to make short work of the Rocket Thunderbolt. We also have two P51 Mustangs coming up. So just going to be flying away from them for now. I'm going to be joined by Cassidy's two-star ME109. Now I'm going to start to go for this dogfight. 
Haymaker's going to bring in his own Focke Wolf 190, and I'm actually going to bring in another ME109 G0 to help out as well. So just going to be completely ambushing the P51 Mustangs now. So I think my Flak 88 shot down that Mustang. This one went down to the ME109, I believe. Losing an Austrian squad on this far right side to the Willys MMG. But it's just going to get quickly sniped by the ME109 there, so Cassidy doing a good job with his I've evac'd mine, got them out of there just so they can re uh, supply and uh, refuel for the next air engagement, I've got to have them ready to take out the bombers so that's uh, why I evac'd them so early now here the M1 gun getting pinned down by the B2, B2 very fast at pinning things down that M1 probably had one shot before it was going to be pinned down, so yeah, it failed itself. By the way, Pack 40 going to be taking out M22 there. I've also got my Bear Flammen hitting the road here with its napalm rockets. Marauder coming in with its bombing strike. That's going to be going for the Flak 88. Now, just about misses that. ME109 forced to fall back just about in time. B26B Marauder here did get a few oil leaks going, <laughs> but uh, the gunners managed to make that ME109 rethink his life choices. Right, so moving on. We've got the B2 pushing forwards. Further to the left now than before. I've still got this B2 helping with some of this infantry, but that's only because I've managed to stop a lot of these tanks come up the main road with the rocket strikes, like pinning them down, just making them ineffective, has really worked out. Now since we are on a plus three, 35 seconds left until victory, you can see even here the B2 is pinning down the Sherman, even though it doesn't really have much of a chance of penetration, but just a few bounces off the front of the Sherman 5 and <laughs> Sherman 5 is going to do a runner, which might give my B2 a chance to get out of line of sight. Now my ME109s, they are on the field and bringing in B26B Marauders. Not the best choice at this point, since I am just going to shoot them all down. So even the points he invested in the air now dying as the game ends. And after 24 minutes and 44 seconds, we are victorious. And if we jump over to the team perspective, 2,745 kills to 820 losses. So, is the 716th overpowered now? Mm, I don't know. I still think they can obviously be countered by like the artillery and uh, airstrikes in the right locations. Like If you hit the support vehicles and support weapons, then you will do a lot of damage to the 716th. However, with the price buff to the B2s I feel like they're just I don't know it, I think I feel like it just makes the the vision steamroll even more than it did before and when you got a lead you can obviously pitter out if they again start to use artillery properly but if you get ahead as the 716th and your opponent starts to then buy artillery you you just catch up to that artillery and you kill it so there is that. Either way, um, that was just a, a, basically an interesting look at the 716th since the latest patch. I had a lot of fun with it, of course. I always loved using the 716th. Pack 37 got plenty of kills at the start there. That's the one that, one of the ones in the orchard. This was the one to the right side of the orchard. Got plenty of kills. IG-18 picking up its fair share. B2 again picking up its fair share. And this B2 paying itself off nicely. And we had, at the end of the game, about a 1,000 points worth of playing kills between my Flak 88s and the ME 109s. It's nice to see the Flak 88 one-shot a Mustang out of the sky. That was quite interesting. By the way, there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.